Hi there and welcome. This is Roger and in this quick video I'm going to show you how to set up PDFs to be e-signable in Swift Cloud and it's actually very simple. Once you see the basics I'm just going to go through an overview and then I'll go through in more detail and frankly most clients won't need the more detail. That's probably for developers and people who want more information but once you get the basic idea you'll get it. Now before we even start I want to mention that with, when it comes to PDFs specifically, don't use them if you can help it. And here's what I mean, is we have two different systems for electronic signature. Now PDFs, because they need to match the source formatting, they will not look as good on a phone or a tablet. We can't help that. It has to match the exact source. That's part of the whole system. So what you want to do is instead use the shortcode system. And for most contracts, for almost all documents, unless it's a government document like a W-2 or an I-9 or something like that in the United States, then generally speaking, our other electronic signature system is better. And the upside to that is it will format itself to the device, such as a phone or a tablet or a large screen or whatever it is. PDFs are uh, to be used when it has to match the exact source. We are going to soon build a system where you could use a responsive doc to fill in the data so that when the person gets to the PDF, all they have to do is sign it. We do actually already support filling of variables. Also, before we dive into this, we have three different sort of general categories of electronic signature, which are boilerplate, where pretty much everything's common to everybody. Uh, we've got semi-custom, where let's say only a few fields change, let's say pricing or the rate or something like that, but it's not a highly custom. And then we've got fully custom sort of one-off documents, and that's typically used in sales contracts, for example, uh, where you might have 16 pages and out of the 16 pages, let's say it's a, a project proposal. We've got solutions for every one of these systems. And in the fully custom, then we encourage you to look into our template system and our other training. Uh, so what we're talking about here today is really for PDFs that are typically used for boilerplate, meaning everybody's signing the same thing. Let's say it's a government W-4 uh, or something, in the, again, in the United States. Uh, or it's semi-custom where only a few things change. So all of that said, let's dive into it. Once you are logged in, you'll see a page that looks something like this. You want to click the three dinner plates up here on the left, click on Drive, and what we want to do is we're going to upload a PDF. So I'm in the templates account. And that brings me to a good point, which is before you do any conversion, especially for common forms that are common to industry or common to a government or something like that, the first thing you should do is check the templates library. We have an existing templates library, so for common forms, we want to, this to be useful and easy to use and save you the setup hassle. Uh, so if you click on templates, then you will see something that looks, you know, like this. I'm in the actual templates account, so it looks exactly the same for me. Uh, however, you can go there and you can search for industry-specific or general things like NDAs and stuff that everybody needs. We've already got all these things set up for you. So because we're dealing with PDFs, then uh, generally most of the, the PDF templates are going to be under government forms for things like W-2s, W-4s, I-9s, that sort of thing. Uh, in this case, I'm going to, just because it's a complicated form, I'm going to use a Mortgage 1003, which is a uh, loan application form that must be exact because it's specific to the underwriters and stuff like that. So I'm going to purposely choose a complicated form, but once you see me do a few fields, you'll get the idea. So we'll go in here to industry specific. Check uh, templates before you uh, start converting any doc if you think it's something that's common. What we're going to do is go to the actual, uh, get the actual PDF, and I'm just going to save it to my desktop. I'll just save it as 1003, and then what I need to do is upload the 1003 that I just saved right here. And the system is going to redirect me into it. And it's going to tell me that this is just a PDF. It doesn't actually work. It's not fillable or signable or anything like that. It's just a PDF. I do need it to be signable. So what I'm going to do is click that. It's going to think for a moment. Okay, and here we are in the converted document. So before I lengthen the screen, notice that it's overhanging here. Again, we are limited. I'm recording this on a smaller screen so it's easier for uh, video. But uh, notice that it is overhanging and that's an example of why you don't want to use PDFs if you can help it. In this case, I'll just widen this out a little bit so that we can see what we're doing. Okay, next. Notice it's uh, got the original PDF name. I want to re rename that so because that is going to be seen by consumers who sign this in the page meta title. It's not a big deal. 
Next, what I want to do is add fields. So our system will separate the first name and last name. So I'm just going to put in name both. And what I'm going to do is drag this little arrow here and just drag it into place. For additional people, we have an additional people by role system. I'm going to drag that in. And generally speaking, anytime there's options, uh, right now we will get that uh, tooltip corrected. Right now it's kind of hard to read, but basically if you click this little gear, any of the fields options will show up in a pop-up. So in this case, I'm going to change this to co-borrower. Okay, so that's the basic idea. So what I'm going to do is go through and add the various field types for the entire document. So in case for anybody with a short attention span who just wants the basics, then you could probably take it from here and notice that we do have e-signature fields. We just have a field called e-signature. Now because signatures involve drawing, signatures and initials, there you have to actually set the size. Using the additional people, the reason I'm using, instead of just form fields, instead I want to use the additional people is because this will actually create another contact in, in Swift Cloud's system. And then what it'll do is it'll link the two together. So in this case, it'll be, uh, you know, typically a spouse, but in this case, it's just co or It could be siblings or it could be who knows what. For anybody who uh, prefers to just play with the system, this is probably as much as you need to know. Uh, you can go through and just start layering in fields, and then you need to make sure at the bottom, click Save Changes. Next, in the pink box, you want to decide what's going to happen after this person has signed. Do you want to send them to payment? Do you want to send them to back to your website to say, thanks, we've got your confirmation? Uh, you've got a couple different options. Choose those in the pink box here. In terms of the URL, uh, that comes from the Setup Wizard and comes from the uh, profile page, right? So if you don't see your URL there, you can just go to profile, make sure that you have a, a URL there, and then it'll and then reload this page and you'll see it. So most of the time it's consistent, uh, consistently back to the website. We will later add uh, some conditional logic, like, and that's typically used for payment, right? If they choose package A, then we send them to payment option for A, payment B, something like that. We also want to make sure that we send the user copy in most cases. So in this case, you just click uh, anything else you want to happen. You just click this plus, and you'll see that uh, throughout the whole system. And here's the actual email that they're going to get. So notice it says first cap, uh, first name, first cap. And that's so that if they type in Bob all, ca all caps, then it's going to first uh, capitalize just the first letter. You can customize this message as you see fit and just hit save at the bottom. Next, you want to decide who's going to get a copy of this, right? So in this case, but anyway, this is where you could change it to, you know, email to some other email if you wanted to. Uh, you've also got a couple options in terms of installation. So you just click this bullhorn here at the bottom and says, okay, if this was, uh, if you wanted to install this to your website, then this is how you would do it. You just basically push the traffic to this. We are working on domain mapping. So everybody's got a subdomain right now that's already built into the platform uh, we are all and with that that allows for CNAME mapping so that you could do set up something like secure.yourwebsite.com speaking of that we want to make sure that you have in your profile the branding set up uh, our goal is that when people get to the eSign docs that it feels consistent it should have your logo your colors we want to want that to be as as not jarring as possible that said, it must be on our servers. We do not allow signature on any other servers, and we can't allow iframes. And the reason is because that would potentially, we would not be able to guarantee in court the signer intent if iframes are allowed, meaning you could theoretically obfuscate some of the document or try and inject CSS into it or something like that. We can't allow any of that. We need to be able to guarantee in court that your signature, your signer intent matches the source document. So from here, I'm going to go into greater detail, and this is for the people that are, let's say, more concerned about some of the finer points. So in this case, this is a radio button. They can only choose one. They cannot choose multiple. So what I want to do is just go here to radio, form fields, and I want radio. They can only choose one, and then I need to count the options. So it's, they've got five possible options here, and we'll say this is required, and this is mortgage type. What it's going to do is it's going to drop a bunch of these checkboxes. Now, the the blue area is the clickable area. So what I'm going to do is drag this to, notice that the little yellow box, we're going to continue working on this style, and I think we might have to make a small option uh, to make this more obvious. But 
what we want to do is just kind of drag these into place. Occasionally what will happen is you'll run into this situation, so I'm just going to drag this off over here for a second, and then I'll drag it back into place. So the blue area is the clickable, and then of course once it's actually, sometimes there's just really no way around it, what you'll end up having to do is exactly this, like you see, where it's sort of overlapping. And uh, we'll continue to refine this. We don't want the clickable area to be overlapping. That can create a problem. So what we'll do is do our best. I think after this, after I see this training video, I think we're going to need some size options on the checkboxes. But you get the basic idea. So then we want to just drag this back into place. And, uh, and we basically go through that for the entire document. At any time, you can hit Preview, and it'll bring up the actual document. Right? So here we have the actual fields. Uh, dates and times, this is a very powerful system. Just pay attention to the types of dates. So we've got yours, theirs, and GMT. So yours is, is as per your profile settings. Uh, and that's specific to you and it's based on the server and then it's adjusted to you and this is, can be critical especially in let's say real estate where you might have a midnight cutoff for certain things. Most people don't care about that th this that much but if you need it we do have powerful options and take this very very seriously because we do in some cases have legal documents that uh, are affected by the actual date and time signed and, and specifically whose date and time. So the signer's date and time, let's say they're in Hawaii or your date and time, let's say you're in New York, that's a six hour time difference. So e-signature, you've got the signatures and initial fields uh, and you do have some size options for those. Form fields, that's going to be your general uh, sort of things. Occasionally in PDFs, you don't see this in the documents system, but occasionally you just need to overlay text onto PDF. For example, we require email and some of these forms don't have a space for email. So what you'll do is just find some white space at the bottom. In fact, let's go ahead and set that up right now. So we've got multiple pages navigation that you can navigate to on the end. So what we want to do is find a good space for the email. What we'll do is we'll add this email field. We'll just drag it to where we want. So we're, in this case, we're going to just tuck it into the corner. And then what we need, what we need to do is go to Fields and Text Label. We're just going to put Email. And the email is required, right? So we do that because we need it internally. As a quick reminder, every doc that's ever signed will go into a workroom, which is a shared folder inside the incoming folder. So if you go to Drive, you'll have a folder called, as soon as somebody signs something, you'll have a folder called Incoming. Folders, of course, will show the files that have been generated. So here you've got an actual CSV sheet, a comma-separated value. It's like a spreadsheet of all of the actual source data. If you just wanted the data, this can be helpful, by the way, for importing. If you've got a complicated form and you want to import it into some other system. And then here's the actual PDF. Workrooms can contain a variety of assets. So right now it's just uh, we've got files, right? In this case, we've got two files. Uh, we've also got the people involved. You get the idea. Basically, you can add additional people if you wanted to, uh, to uh, people. And then you can also start to uh, get into messaging and, and make private notes that are private to you. Hope that helps. If you have any questions, let us know, and we will update this training.